Quantum computing has a chance to change the world forever. Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arias, and today we're going to dive into IonQ and discuss who they are and how they do what they do. Let's jump right into it. Let's start out by going over IonQ at a high level. IonQ, as I'm sure you know, is a quantum computing company building trapped ion quantum computers. IonQ was founded in 2015 by two professors, Chris Monroe and Jung Sun Kim with licensed core technology from their universities of Maryland and Duke. They fielded a 25 qubit quantum computer in 2022 and improved that to have a 29 qubit system in 2023. They also switched over to barium ions in 2023, which have a number of benefits that we'll talk about more later and replicated the 29 qubit system with barium. They claim to have already achieved their 2024 target, a 35 qubit system which puts them roughly a year ahead of schedule. They claim this system is now better than quantum simulators and that they've even added an extra qubit for good measure to achieve AQ36. They're targeting a 64 qubit system in 2025, which would be a real world useful system. While this projected growth appears extraordinary, interestingly, it has been their plan all along. This is a slide from their 2021 SPAC presentation and all of their past targets have been achieved while all their future targets remain unaltered. That's pretty impressive for a deep tech company. However, those targets do get much more aggressive starting in 2025 and only continue to grow going forward. So it'll be very interesting to see if they can continue to meet those goals. Let's now talk about what exactly computing is because without at least a cursory understanding of that, it will be hard to understand IonQ. Quantum computers use qubits to perform calculations rather than regular bits like classical computers. These qubits have a few special properties that enable them to perform more complex computations. Quickly, two of these are quantum superposition, which allows a qubit to be more than just a one or a zero, like classical bits, and can be a mix of these states, and quantum entanglement, which links two qubit states so that when the state of one is altered, the other is also instantly impacted. As you might expect, the number of useful qubits determines the types of calculations performed, and I say useful qubits because there is some error introduced with each qubit, and this has downstream effects that we'll discuss in two slides. The way IonQ's approach works, every additional useful qubit doubles the computational power, meaning that a jump from 36 qubits to 64 would mean you would go from being able to consider 34 billion possibilities to 18 quintillion possibilities. This is what those numbers look like. IonQ's approach specifically is much more repeatable than competitors and requires less error correction than other approaches. Their qubits also have all-to-all -all connectivity, whereas other approaches may have more limited lattice connectivity. Both of these increase the overall ceiling of IonQ's approach. Let's run through more in depth how IonQ's trapped quantum computing process works. They start with a quantum element that is stable and easy to manipulate with lasers. Up until 2023, they have been using ytterbium. But in 2023, on their AQ29 system, they switched to using barium, which is cheaper to use and more accurate, while still remaining similar chemically to ytterbium, so they can continue to build on the learnings thus far. Next, lasers are used to remove a single electron from the barium atom, making it a positively charged ion. These ions, which ultimately are each a qubit, are electromagnetically levitated over a chip in a vacuum container. The vacuum is required because without it, qubits would have significant error introduced over time from atmospheric interference. These lasers are used to activate quantum logic gates between qubits, which perform the calculation. Finally, the lasers read out the state of all the qubits and reset them for the next calculation. That's about as much detail as I could find in my moderate amount of research, and I still have questions, especially around how the lasers create these quantum gates and how exactly they read out the state of the ions. Another important concept that we touched on earlier is error mitigation and how that compares to error correction. From what I understand, error mitigation uses a few extra qubits in software analysis to correct the quantum output. This requires fewer overhead qubits that are not being used in calculations, and this is the approach that IonQ is currently using. At some point, with additional qubits added, the error stacks up and becomes too much for error mitigation and requires error correction. Error correction uses many more qubits to monitor and correct for each other than error mitigation. This leads to many more qubits being added to correct for errors, meaning to add a useful qubit, you may need to add 16 additional qubits to monitor and correct errors. Due to the accuracy of ion cues to trapped ion approach, they require a low ratio of error correction qubits to useful qubits, 
which should allow them to expand faster and ultimately grow their useful cubic count larger. However, in the short term, they announced that they believe they can now get to a 64 qubit system with error mitigation alone, which significantly de-risks the development of the 64-bit machine. Now, how would these machines be actually used? The biggest and most obvious use cases to me are optimization problems. For example, what is the optimal route for a delivery truck to take? If they have 25 stops to make, all in a very close area, what would be the optimal way to reach all the stops in the least amount of time with the least amount of wear and tear on the truck? That is a very difficult problem that today's classical machines can only approximate the correct solution. Another example that they gave was loading a cargo plane. You have to consider nearly infinite possible combinations in concert with the weight and balance required on aircraft. They actually did a test demo with their current machines on a simplified problem in concert with Airbus, and it was successful and served as a proof of concept and how they may be able to scale up and solve similar problems with more complexity in the future. Another example of future applications that they gave a lot is machine learning. This confused me significantly because the example application that they showed was image recognition and described an algorithm that was really similar to today's classical computer image recognition algorithms. I don't understand how this would work at all on quantum computers, especially with so few qubits as they are applying. I also wonder how they would deploy it with quantum computers being large for the time being, and how exactly they would compete with classical machine learning, which is moving at breakneck speed. So while I have some questions surrounding quantum machine learning, I think there will absolutely be use cases in optimization problems and even more complex modeling problems, such as in material science or chemistry. Before we get into some final questions and then wrap up, let's check in on INQ's balance sheet as they will need significant cash to keep developing their systems. In 2023, revenue is pretty immaterial at just $22 million for the full year. However, they do expect an approximately doubling to around $40 million in revenue in 2024. They had $65 million in bookings in 2023, and they expect that to increase more modestly to around $80 million in 2024. They did open up a factory in Seattle in February of 24, so I expect this to increase expenses as well as facilitating increased revenues. They expect losses to ramp up to around $110 million in 2024 on an adjusted EBITDA basis, which would be about 40% more than in the past year. Most importantly, they ended the year with $456 million in cash and equivalents. That will give them approximately three years of runway at the current burn rate. However, if they do achieve AQ64, that may be an opportune time to raise some money and increase the runway, especially given the increased burn that they are expecting in 2024 which would lower their runway down to closer to just two years. This is a decent financial position, but not stellar, and will likely require some sort of capital raise to continue at some point. While I'm super excited about the potential of quantum computing that IonQ could bring, I'm still left with a few questions for the company's future. My first big question is on the technical feasibility of error correction progress. Have they been able to validate this capability? If not, it remains a large technical barrier to advancing into much larger quantum computers with overwhelming abilities, it will be important for them to solve that challenge early so that it doesn't inhibit their goals down the road. Second, I wonder what is behind the relatively slow progress thus far and then a huge jump followed by even larger jumps. So far, successive generations that they've announced have added four qubits, another four qubits, and then six qubits most recently. But as currently planned, their next generation would add 29 qubits. What's behind the ability to drastically increase all of a sudden? Is that same ability what will enable the jumps from 64 to 256, and from 256 to 384, or 1,024 qubits? I have not seen any explanation, but I would be very interested. It is possible that a cynic would suggest that they would go public with relatively soft, achievable goals for the first few years, but more audacious, exciting goals in a few years, hoping to hit their first few goals, keeping the stock elevated for the first years, and lull investors into a false sense of security before struggling with the more meaningful goals that are further out. I'm not saying that this is the case, but this is one of the potential explanations. Another question I have is around their business model and where the value will accrue to. It seems like they are looking at both selling compute as a service, as many cloud companies do today, as well as selling their computers themselves. This is all well and good, but I wonder sometimes where the real value will accrue to there is at least some potential that it accrues more to the application layer. For example, in material science, if they were to make some breakthrough using a quantum computer, the company who made the breakthrough would just pay for the compute to get there and then get to reap the rewards of the breakthrough almost exclusively. This doesn't mean that IonQ can't still make a ton of money, 
but unless they plan to stand up companies in every vertical that could use quantum to improve, they will not be capturing all the value that quantum brings. My final question is on competition. There are many well-resourced companies that are going after the quantum space along with IonQ. Many already have profitable businesses attached and a whole bunch more cash and can fund research almost indefinitely as a result. Some are also mostly for internal use and thus there may be less information coming out about their progress, making it harder for investors to evaluate where IonQ stands in comparison. So while I do have a bunch of questions, IonQ is still a very intriguing company in a space with huge potential. I didn't have the time to do a deep dive into the Scorpion report, so let me know if you'd like to see a video breaking that down, as well as looking into more in their competition. What's holding me back from an investment in IonQ is the fact that they don't have any solid sure indication that they are the definitive leader. They are starting to build a record of execution that is definitely exciting to see, and it very well may be too late by the time they are proven to be the leaders to reap all the rewards of that. What would prove to be that they are their leaders is if they could produce a result that you could only get with a quantum computer. That would truly prove to me that they are ahead of the pack and technically relevant, but for now, I will continue to just monitor INQ. Thank you for watching, and have a rest of your day.